Hello everybody, I am Indy McDaniel, and welcome back to Her Story, and it's time for us to watch through interview number 2 in chronological and complete order. So let's get started with a quick 3 second clip and then just move on from there. Um, could I have a cup of tea? I haven't been into work. I've been... I mean, I guess I've just been waiting. Waiting to hear from you. Hear from my husband. Bruce. Oh, yeah, no, it's nothing. I was going through the top cupboard in my kitchen and the chair slipped and I kind of hit the door with my face. We hurt like hell. <laughs> Yeah. I've been round to Doug and Eleanor's and they're very worried. I feel sorry for them. Well, Eric was like an uncle to him. They were pretty close. They spend a lot of time with each other, especially when they have to go to conferences. Have you met his wife, Diane? Diane is really nice. She helps out with the glaziers, organises the Christmas party, that sort of thing. They have two kids, really sweet kids. She used to look out for me when I worked there. Okay, I'll try my best to remember. Yes, he left after the argument. It was about... Eight o'clock. Yes, that's my birthday. Not one of the big ones, but I guess you can see that. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm quite a private person and I didn't want to get into the detail of the argument. It was my birthday, like you said. We were going to have a meal at home. We had our meal. He gave me his present. I guess I didn't like the present. It wasn't the present so much. It was one of those arguments that had been simmering for a while. The present was a mirror, a nice mirror. He'd engraved the glass, the kind of mirror a princess would have in a story. He made it specially for me. When you've been married for 10 years, stuff accumulates. We could argue about anything. And he's so nice. That doesn't help. He tries to smooth things over and that just makes it worse. We're both passive aggressive, so we never normally argue directly about anything. What about us? I did. Well, we met when we were 17, both working at the glaciers. Yeah, when I was at school. I worked part-time in the front shop. It was sort of an extended family thing. My dad used to work there, my mom worked there before I was born. Oh. I took care of paperwork, filing, typing out invoices, that kind of thing. It was a good job for a girl back then. I didn't work a till or anything, though. I was quite shy, so I wouldn't have liked to have worked a till. No, he was as shy as me. I asked, well, I asked a friend to ask him out for me. 
We had our first date at the Odeon in North End. We went to see Whiskey Business. I had on my one best dress. Simon paid. He bought me a whisper, and I was worried about getting chocolate on my teeth. I got pregnant. Both our parents had a big powwow. We weren't even in the room, and they decided we should get married. I guess you could call it that, but we were both, both happy to get married. It was a beautiful wedding. <laughs> we had our first dance to come back and stay. I'm not sure if that's a good wedding song, but I loved it. I chose it. I mean, it was genuinely our first dance. We'd never danced together before. It was probably awful to watch, but I enjoyed it. It felt like it was just me and Simon for that moment. Just the two of us. We spent the wedding night in a hotel in Brighton. It would have been too much to do more. We were saving for the baby. It was wonderful to be in a hotel, away from home, just alone together. Since then, we've always tried to get away for our holiday. We couldn't afford our own place. Simon dropped out of school, went full-time at the Glaziers. That was Eric's generosity. We moved in with his mum and dad. They had a spare room for us and the baby, if it came. It was a nice change, time to myself, living there for those months, full of hope. I lost the baby. I had a miscarriage at eight months. We carried on living at Simon's parents until that was only a few months after. Then my parents died. It was the worst year of my life. The miscarriage and then my parents. At the time they said it was poison, food poisoning. I mean, I felt so guilty. If I'd still been at home, maybe I could have done something. I didn't. Yes, I inherited it from my parents, so it made sense to move back, me and Simon. Felt like going back to old ways before the pregnancy. Reminded me of being a girl, a dollhouse in the attic, old things. We didn't sleep in my parents' bedroom for a long time. We decorated it as soon as we moved in, but it was another year before we started sleeping there. I got a job to contribute, you know. Doug knew someone and I got a job as a dinner lady at the primary school. They said it didn't matter if I could cook or not, just don't poison the kids. So you see, it's always been complicated between me and Simon. It's never just been the two of us, there's always been pressure. Something must have happened to him on his way home. He could be hurt. I mean, why hasn't he phoned? I just, I don't know. Oh God, I don't know. I mean, I guess The Rock. We've spoken to everyone there. Someone must have seen where he went. I don't know. So many things could have gone wrong. No. I mean, he was... Everyone loves Simon. He was so... 
nice to everyone. He loves me. Fine. I never had my fingerprints taken before. I once put my hand in the oven. Okay. I've given blood before. Do you need to take that for your records? Okay. Oh, well, that was interview two. Which gave us a bit of the backstory of how they met, and there's definitely some clear indications that Eve is a thing. Now, whether or not... The one thing I'm still not entirely certain is that if Hannah and Eve are two separate people, or if Hannah makes up Eve as kind of an alibi, as a means to get out of being accused of murder, but I think Eve is actually a real person because... As you'll see in Interview 3, which takes place reasonably shortly after Interview 2, that bruise is entirely gone. A and a tattoo appears and disappears as well, so... Most of the evidence seems to point that Eve is actually a real person. And I did notice hints of, like, we were never truly alone and this and that. Shit that she, she said that implied Eve's presence even before it was officially revealed. But uh, anyway, so that was Interview 2. I'll be moving directly on to Interview 3 in the next episode. So, thank you for watching. If you liked it, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And until next time, see yous.